Welcome back to What RT Noobs with General Disturbance. This is a Conqueror, it's a British Tier 9 heavy tank, and this one's located on the south spawn of Empire's border under the command of Captain Ashstorm. Now he's probably got the 120mm gun, I expect he has, the L1A1, which has got 400 alpha and penetrates up to 259mm of ammo with stand, uh, armor with standard ammo. Okay, battle started. Now you can see Captain Ashton's got one mark on the barrel and he's working on his second, I should think. Okay, you might notice we changed the reticule yet again. <laughs> um, I'm still trying to find the perfect reticule for the game. Reload time is just under 9 seconds. Now some of you actually remark that you prefer a, um, a replay or video with as little in the way of mods as possible. And uh, obviously since I've been doing some old replays recently which don't have any mods at all, it certainly appealed to you. But um, I'm still trying to find the perfect setup that will enable you to have as few mods as possible but as much information as possible on the enemy. And you can see the Capture National is going down to the far west corner, southwest corner. I'm in my favour doing this as well. You can go up over that hill and you can use the ridge line, keep your gun depression and this tank does have good gun depression. It's got 10 degrees of gun depression. It is a, a version of the Carnarvon or a, a souped up Carnarvon. And as you can see, it's got the burst plates around the turret that help prevent heat rounds penetrating. Oh, well, we took a hit there from the 705. Quite a big hit at that. And another one from the T10. So not very good. We fire one back into the charioteer. And so we've hit both the object 705 and the charioteer. And the enemy's capping already now. I do wonder... Oh, it's an encounter game, that's why. Okay, so trying to use the under pressure. And we've got the charioteer. Okay, can we put a round into that T10? Nope, missed on that occasion. It says damage blocked. Okay, we've got a mouse to our right. It's being indicated. I think actually that mouse may be somewhere else. Or is he? No, SU-130 PM. Good shot! Before the mouse, the SU-130 PM could actually get steady, he managed to put a shell through the gun shield. There's the 705. Puts one into his lower plate. 367. It's a low roll. But he can get the side of the 705 now. Oh, oh, oh no, he's turning around and now he's being blocked. Oh, nice one, right into the rear. High roll this time. And here comes that SU-130. Get a shot in return. Yes, into the gun shield again. Very difficult. Oh wow! Got an ammo rack on the 705. That was fantastic. 456 hit points on one shot. Now pushing over this ridge line, strip. Right into the top. 351. Overmatched his armor. Of course, that's because we've got a 120 millimeter shell uh, gun, and he's only got 30 millimeters of armor. And three times the uh, armor and you'll overmatch it. And of course, 19 millimeters of uh, calibre is, is enough to uh, go through a strip. Look at the number of holes in him now. And that takes him out of the game. So, three kills for Captain Eshkel. Now he's pushing and he's going to take this uh, T10 if he can. Yes, gets 392 into him and the kill goes to the E50 who came up behind him. And now everyone's pushing, and I think he's going after the mouse and the mouse, mile breaker. 
they're just around the corner and they've just lost the uh, mouse. So this game is going to be over fairly quickly. Well, he's a one shot now, the mile breaker. Whoever's firing. Oh! Before Captain Ashton could get the shot in, game was over. And he was requested to platoon at the last second by the RT, but I think it was just too late. So let's have a look at the end of battle stats. It's a first class tanker for Captain Ashstorm in the Conqueror. He got the uh, demolition expert for blowing up that 705. Literally, it was very explosive and it was very welcome because it would have taken two shots to kill him my voice. And he also got a fire for effect and a bruiser medal, but unfortunately he didn't get any other medal. No epic medals on that one. Uh, win 8 for the game, 7,283, which is very good. So let's have a look at team scores. Well, he's top of the table. He didn't get the high caliber. He actually managed to get 4,412 hit points of damage in that one. Uh, so it's a bit puzzling that he didn't get any medal out of that. You would have thought he would have got the high caliber. The next high score was the MX 50B, got 3602. And after that, it's the Progetto with 2784. Um, when it came to kills, he also had the highest, shared that with the Conqueror gun carriage. And they could have had enough for a Brothers in Arms if only the uh, Conqueror gun carriage had put the request in sooner. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Captain Ashton would have accepted. And when it came to base XP, again, it's Captain Ashton. So he's basically top in all three columns. 1,187 base experience points, 804 to the 50B, and 793 to the AMX 1390. He fired 14 rounds and got 13 direct hits and 12 penetrations. Shows the accuracy of his shooting, and also that this gun, this 120mm gun, is very accurate. In, in, very accurate indeed in terms of uh, not even getting shots on target, but the shells tend to drill through the target very easily. 4,412, as we said, and all of it was at close range. He received three hits from the enemy. Two of them were penetration, one non-penetration. Those two penetrations actually came right at the start of his engagement, both from the 705 and the T10. He blocked damage of 390 hit points. He spotted three enemy vehicles, damaged five of the enemy, killed three of them, and did 374 hit points of damage assistance. On a premium account, he earned 65,412 credits, got 16,353 from personal reserves, total 81,765, and after repair, ammunition resupply, and consumables, he took away 37,379 credits. On the experience side, he earned 1,780, and unfortunately there were no multipliers, so that's all he took away, but... It was a pretty good battle, and it was over very quickly. I think, actually, did it last less than five minutes? Well, battle duration, five minutes exactly. So it just goes to show it was very efficient. And I do favor going down to that corner because it gives you a whole world of options. Not only the ability to shoot over a ridgeline, uh, as that SU-130PM was trying to do, and, of course, that's a bad decision for a very lightly armored tank destroyer, uh, but it also means you can go around the corner and side scrape if you wanted to, which is what the T10 and the 705 were doing. If you enjoyed that replay, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel. And hopefully it'll be your replay that I'll be featuring in the next video.